Hi, in this video we're going to talk about mathematical symbols. So mathematical symbols are different symbols that come up in mathematics that you learn about typically if you're a math major and you take a course where you learn to write proofs. But if you're a calculus student or a you know algebra student, typically you don't see all of these symbols, but they're really basic and they're really easy. So my hope is that with this video you can learn some new symbols. So first, let's just discuss um, what a set is. So we're going to let A be a set. So this is called a set. And a set is basically just uh, a collection of objects. So a collection of objects. So the things that are in the set, um, they're called elements of the set. Um, you can also call them members. So those are the things that are inside the set. So let's just do a simple example here so you can see. Say we have the set containing numbers. So say one, two, three. So this is a set and it contains three numbers or three elements or three members, all the same thing. And so you need some notation to indicate uh, what uh, members are in the set. So what you do is you use this symbol here. Okay, it looks like that, it looks like a little weird symbol, <laughs> and you say x is an element of A, or x is in A. So that's how you read this. You say is in, is an element of, belongs to. That's another way to say it. So there's various ways to say the same thing. You could say x belongs to A, x is in A, x is a member of A, x is an element of A. Multiple ways to say it, and you want to have multiple ways of saying it so that when you look at this, you can just say X is, and then you pick your choice. Personally, I see this and I think X is an A. It's less syllables, easier for my mind. Um, so as a concrete example, one is an element of the set. So you could say that one is an element in A. Likewise, um, two is an element in A. Likewise, three is an element in A. What number is not in here? Well, four is missing, so you could say four and then you draw the symbol and you put a line through it. And that means four is not an element of A because it's not there. Likewise, the number pi is not an element of A. So now you know a new symbol. It's this symbol here and it means is in, it means belongs to, etc. The next symbol I wanna talk about is uh, the for all symbol. So it's like this upside down A and it means for all. And this is an example of something called a quantifier, okay? So it's an example of a quantifier. Um, there's other quantifiers. Um, the other one is this one here. It's like this backwards E. And this means there exists. Okay, so we have for all and there exists. So let's just do some examples. So easy example would be something like, if you look at um, x squared, right, the quantity x squared, the expression x squared, this is always positive or it's zero, as long as the input is a real number. So like, if I plug in two, I get four. If I plug in negative two, I get four. If I plug in zero, I get zero. So as long as you plug in real numbers, right, you don't wanna plug in i, because then you might be negative. But if you restrict yourself um, to real numbers, it's always greater than or equal to zero. So basically we want to say that for every real number, this is greater than or equal to zero for all the real numbers. And that's where a quantifier like this comes in. So in mathematics, the set of real numbers is denoted by this funny R. See how I did that? Let me do it again. Line, line, boom, line, line, boom. So this is the set of all real numbers. This is the set of real numbers. So if you were to list out this set like this, it'd be impossible because there'd be too many numbers to list. This is a finite set. You only have three things, but with the real numbers, there's infinitely many. A common way that people represent this set in their math classes is using what's called interval notation. So they'll write a parentheses like this and a negative infinity, and they'll put an infinity here. Most calculus books uh, use this type of notation, interval notation because it lends itself really well to the study of calculus. So if you're like in Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, differential equations, even in algebra classes, this is introduced in algebra, and that's the notation that most books at colleges use. But you have other notation you can use, like this and like this. 
So now let's try to use the for all symbol uh, to indicate that this is positive or zero for all x. So you would say for all x, right, for all x in the set of real numbers, I'll put a comma here, we have that x squared is greater than or equal to zero, right? So that is a true statement, right? So for every x in a set of real numbers, x squared is greater than or equal to zero. So that would be a way of using the for all symbol, right? So for all x in the set of real numbers, x squared is greater than or equal to zero. Um, so that's for all. Let's do an example of there exists. So for example, let's take the set. Um, this is a simple example. Um, the set x such that um, x is um, greater than two and x is even. So this is the set. The way you read this is the set of all x such that x is greater than two and x is even. So this set has uh, a bunch of numbers in it. Um, for example, uh, the first um, number that's bigger than two and is even is four. The next one would be six. The next one would be eight, etc. So what we can say about this set is that there are numbers in this set that are divisible by four. So that's an example of how we can use this. So I could say there exists a number in this set that is divisible by four. So I could say, let me give this set a name. I'll call it B. So now I could say there exists x in b such that x is divisible by 4. So that's a, a simple example that I just like made up right now on the spot of there exists. So this is an example of how you could use this quantifier. Um, so now you know two quantifiers. You know this one. This is the for all. And you know this one, this one means um, there exists. These come up a lot in calculus. Um, let me give you an example, a hard example. Let's just go nuts. It's just like unchanged or whatever the word is. So in calculus, you study limits. So you have the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l, where l here is a real number. So let's assume in all of this, l is a real number. So what does this mean? This means, okay, this means for all epsilon greater than zero, okay, this is what this means, there exists delta greater than zero. I'm going to abbreviate such that with st, well, I'll spell it, such that for all real numbers. So this is just the definition. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write the definition and then I'm going to write it using quantifiers so you see how to use them. So for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that for all real numbers with the distance between x and a less than delta, we have the distance between f of x and l less than epsilon. All right, so now uh, I'm going to take this statement and I'm gonna write it using quantifiers. And hopefully you can hear me, there's a very loud lawnmower outside. So for all epsilon greater than zero, you can simply say for all epsilon greater than zero. Boom. There exists a delta greater than zero. There exists a delta greater than zero. For such that, you can use st for all real numbers with, so I'm talking about the real numbers x. I probably should have an x here, such that for all x and r, with this inequality being true, we have this inequality being true. So that's how you would take the definition of a limit you would see in a calculus book, perhaps, and translate it using quantifiers. So kind of a, a crash course using quantifiers. I went pretty quickly, and hopefully you could hear me above the very loud lawnmower outside. Um, so, yeah, so this one is, um, belongs to, is in, is a member of, this is for all, and this is there exists. So, 
yeah, just some extra, extra life knowledge. Good luck.